Hi guys, it is now closing in on midnight on Sunday night. Another exciting Sunday night has come and gone in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas. That would be Sunday night, Sunday night, October 7th, but already it is in the minds of the United Nations, I guess, it is already Monday morning somewhere on the planet. October 8th, 2018, which uh, will go down as in infamy as, well, just one more day of descending into an absolute, uh, just, you know, chest deep, well, hell, over your head pile of unadulterated horse shit. And... I want to thank Osama number five for uh, giving me indigestion right before bed. You know, I was getting ready to write the third obituary for alert former tribes member Andy Gardner, uh, who has tragically, uh, tragically left us again. And I was ready, just sitting down to write my third obituary. Andy's starting to sound like, you know, is it Kenny on South Park who uh, keeps getting killed over and over again? So Andy is dead again, but uh, I'm going to save that obituary, uh, that sad tale of Andy's parting for another day because we have a an emergency press release. It is official from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The IPCC has come out with their long-awaited report, their long-awaited <coughs> summary for policymakers of IPCC special report on global warming of one and a half degree. One and a half degree C approved by governments. Okay, it is official. So uh, without any uh, dilution or varnish from the mainstream media, let's hear it directly from the horse's ass the IPCC. We got the brand new no shit Sherlock button uh, ready to have a race with the bullshit detected button. I love it when uh, I get to pick up both buttons at the same time and if, if there's anything that has come across my radar where you need to have both buttons in your hand, but we're gonna start with the little button <clears throat> Limiting global warming to one and a half degrees C would require rapid, far-reaching, and unprecedented changes in all aspects of society. No shit, Sherlock. Followed by... No shit detected. Take precautions. The IPCC said in a new assessment, with clear benefits to people and natural ecosystems limiting global warming to one and a half C compared to two C. They don't even talk about three, four, and five C, nowhere mentioned, could go hand in hand with ensuring a more sustainable and equitable society. Yes. The IPCC said on Monday, yes, the, the special report on global warming of one and a half degree C Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's bullshit. was approved by the IPCC on Saturday in Incheon, Republic of Korea. It will be a key scientific input into the catalyst climate change conference in Poland in December when governments review the Paris Agreement to tackle 
climate change. This is uh, yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip over this quote from the chair of the IP. Anyway, uh, moving on. 91 authors and review editors from 40 countries prepared the IPCC report in response to an invitation from the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change when it adopted the Paris Agreement in 2015. All right, here is the, the full name of the report. Global warming of one and a half degrees C, an IPCC special report on the impacts of global warming of one and a half C above pre-industrial levels and related global greenhouse gas emission pathways in the context of strengthening the global response to the threat of climate change, sustainable development, and efforts to eradicate poverty. Of course, every single effort to eradicate poverty results in more greenhouse gases being spewed into the atmosphere and it makes an even bigger joke out of the oxymoron of the oxymoron of the 21st century which would be sustainable development. Yes, the full name is uh, Descent into the ninth ring of bullshit. All right, this is uh, this is Pan Mao Zai, co-chair of one of these got little uh, one of these little working working groups. But one of the key messages that comes out very strongly from this report is that we are already seeing the consequences of one degree C of global warming through more extreme weather, rising sea levels, and diminishing Arctic sea ice, among other changes. No shit, Sherlock. The, the report highlights a number of climate change impacts that could be avoided by limiting global warming to 1.5 C compared to 2 degrees C or more. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. For instance, by 2100, global sea level rise would be 10 centimeters lower with global warming of 1.5 C compared to 2C. The likelihood of an Arctic Ocean free of sea ice in summer would be once per century with global warming of 1.5 degrees C compared with at least once per decade with 2 degree C. Coral reefs would decline by 70 to 90 percent with global warming of one and a half degrees C. No shit, Sherlock. Whereas virtually all, more than 99 percent of coral reefs would be lost with two degree C. Uh, this is Hans Otto Portner, another one of these little uh, lying sacks of shit from the IPCC. Quote, every extra bit of warming matters, especially since warming of one and a half degrees here higher 
increases the risk associated with long-lasting or irreversible changes such as the loss of some ecosystems. No shit, Sherlock. Limiting <coughs> global warming would also give people and ecosystems more room to adapt and remain below relevant risk thresholds at thresholds added partner. The report also examines pathways available, pathways available to limit warming to one and a half degrees C. That was bullshit. What it would take to achieve them. And what the consequences could be. No shit, Sherlock. Okay. All right. Now we're going to listen to Valerie Mason Delmott. Yet another one of these uh, ayahuasca quaffing, uh, brain dead, lying sacks of shit from the IPCC. Okay. The good news is that some of the kinds of actions that would be needed to limit global warming to one and a half C are already underway around the world. But they would need to accelerate. No shit, Sherlock. The report finds that limiting global warming to one and a half C would require rapid and far-reaching transitions in land, energy, industry, buildings, transportation, and cities. No shit, Sherlock. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Global net human-caused emissions of carbon dioxide would need to fall by about 45% by 2030, reaching net zero around 2050. This means that any remaining emissions would need to be balanced by removing CO2 from the air. So here is yet another one of these lying sacks of shit knowing god damn well how fucked we are. These chicken shit little fuckers. You know, uh, I honestly don't know uh, what this is all about. Uh, I guess is this is like, uh, you know, when Copernicus was getting ready to be uh, executed for whatever his crimes were or whatever. I don't know what's going through the, through these idiots' heads. So anyway, what does Jim Scaia have to say about it? Quote, limiting warming to one and a half degrees C is possible within the laws of chemistry and physics. But doing so would require unprecedented changes. No shit, Sherlock. Allowing the global temperature to temporarily exceed or overshoot one and a half C would mean a greater reliance on techniques that remove CO2 from the air to return temperatures to below one and a half C by 2100. The effectiveness of such techniques are unproven at large scale and some may carry significant risks for sustainable development, the report notes. No shit, Sherlock. Okay. Who's next? 
Piradarshi Shukia, another one of these lying sacks of shit. Okay, limiting global warming to one and a half C compared with two degrees C would reduce challenging impacts on ecosystems, human health, and well-being, making it easier to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Just in case you guys are not aware of this, every one of these lying sacks of shit, every one of these motherfuckers knows goddamn well that every single thing in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, well, just the very notion of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is, is, is hilarious on such a black, dark, comic level. Well, they understand that, uh, you know, but they, more importantly, every one of these fuckers understands that the development goals, everything in those uh, would only increase global warming on this planet, but most importantly is every one of these fuckers knows goddamn well there is zero chance, zero chance that we're going to stick to this one and a half degree target, uh, not to mention the two degree target. Every damn one of these lion sacks of shit know this. And, and, and I assume every one of these goddamn mainstream media uh, editors parroting this lying uh, pile of shit uh, know damn well uh, the, the lies that they're just putting out there all over the fucking mainstream media tomorrow. Okay. Let's see, where was I in the middle of all of this crap? Okay. The decisions we make today are critical in ensuring a safe and sustainable world for everyone, both now and in the future. That was Deborah Roberts. Uh, okay, continuing with the lying sack of shit, Deborah Roberts, quote, This report gives policymakers and practitioners the information they need to make decisions that tackle climate change while considering local context and people's needs. If you, if you don't understand what local uh, context and people's needs means, that means the needs, the need for more air conditioners is what they're talking about. The need for more cars uh, the local context in this context is the locality of India, the locality of China, the locality of Brazil. Those local context and people's needs to spew more and more of this shit into the air. Returning to Deborah, the lying sack of shit. Uh, the next few years are probably the most important in our history. No shit, Sherlock. So who is the IPCC? The IPCC is the leading world body for assessing the science related to climate change, its impacts, and potential future risks, and possible response options. All right. 
blah, blah, blah. So what is the Paris Agreement? The Paris Agreement about adopted by 195 nations uh, in December 2015 included the aim of strengthening the global response to the threat of climate change by holding the increase in the global average temperature to well below 2 degrees C above pre-industrial levels and pursuing efforts to limit the temperature increases to one and a half degrees C above pre-industrial levels. Yeah, so as part of that decision, a special report on global warming of one and a half C above pre-industrial levels um, was was invited. Yes, uh, the IPCC accepted the invitation, adding that the special report would look at these issues in the context of strengthening the global response to the threat of climate change, sustainable development, and efforts to eradicate poverty. Oh, God. Uh, anyway, there you have it. If you want to read this bullshit for yourself, uh, I will put the link on here to it if I can remember. But I want to thank Osama uh, number five for uh, for what? What have you done, Osama number five? Here at midnight on a Sunday night, I'm gonna go back to pile of fish dating service uh, to get away from this madness. To find, I'm gonna go look for some intelligent conversation on pile of fish dating service after uh, weathering this this fucking. Uh, the, the moat of bullshit. Jesus fucking Christ. Get me out of here. Are you ready to go to bed, little dog? We are so fucked, and the goddamn IPCC knows it as well as I do. Bye, guys.